record on this. Thank you for joining us today at Discovery Park of America. I'm Katie Jarvis from Discovery Park of America here in Union City, Tennessee. I will be your host for this and other lessons with professors from the University of Tennessee at Martin. These lessons are for students in grades six through nine, but they will be of interest to anyone. Today, I'm excited to introduce Dr. Charles Hammond, a professor of German at UT Martin. He will be talking to us today about reasons why people take German, how accessible German is to English speakers, the structure and logic behind compound nouns in German, and some examples of conversations. So Dr. Hammond, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Katie. I'm excited to learn some German. I've got some friends that have taught me a couple of phrases. Good. I'm excited for your lesson today. So we'll just well, get I, right into it. I like your friends already. <laughs> All right. Well, good. Um, well, I know that this is directed mostly to the sixth to ninth graders. And I want to say hi to everybody uh, in those grades. I remember that time very well. And um, again, my name is uh, Dr. Charles Hammond. I'm a professor of German at the University of Tennessee at Martin. And um, I know you're not in college yet, but I'm, I'm not gonna talk to you like your kids, but because you're not, um, you're preparing to be young adults who are about to embark on a really great adventure, not just an adventure of learning, but an adventure of doing. And perhaps the most exciting opportunity that you're gonna have in college and maybe even high school is travel. And so um, I'm, going to, I'm, I'm going to switch to share screen here. Click and click. Let's see. There we go. Can you see that? Perfect. All right. So that's the German national women's team there after they scored a goal. But anyway, all right. So um, the, one of the most exciting opportunities is travel, like I said. Just a moment there. Okay. Oh, oh sorry. UT Martin. Travel. Um, have you ever wondered what life is like outside of the United States? Satisfying your curiosity and literally leaving your comfort zone will, among other things, teach you a lot of, uh, of what it means to be an American. Um, you know, what our role is in the world, what it has been, you know, what it could be. Um, but how do you travel? There are mainly two ways that people travel. You can do what most people do and get a passport and a plane ticket, and some hotel reservations, and basically be a tourist. <laughs> Once you're in the country of destination, you can visit the tourist attractions and head back to your hotel. And once you've had enough, get back on the plane and head home, okay? Uh, but how exciting is that? If you're anything like me, not very, okay? Or you can spend some time in high school and or college, study the language and culture of the country you're planning to visit, go there and speak to the people in their native language. That's a Russian flag, by the way, not German. Um, you can try their food and their clothing and take part in their traditions. And you'll be able to see and experience life through their eyes and make some great friends along the way. Friends you can stay in touch with really easily after you head back home. To me, that's a much more fun, much more fulfilling, much more memorable way to spend your time abroad. And as usual in life, the more challenging way is ultimately the more rewarding. Okay. But I'm here to talk to you about taking German. People, people uh, learn German for all kinds of reasons. And every one of them is legitimate. And even if you don't find your reason here, the reason is legitimate, okay? Typically, most of my students learn German because A, their ancestors came from a German-speaking country, right? Or somebody's German ancestors, all right. They study fields in which German plays a very prominent role, like philosophy, of course, right? We've got Friedrich Nietzsche there with his famous mustache. Mm -hmm and psychology, right? You got Sigmund Freud there with his, his uh, characteristic cigar. Music, we all know who that is. Dun, 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 right? <laughs> and engineering, especially automotive engineering. Okay. 
and they liked German music groups like Rammstein and Tokyo Hotel, right? And they mm -hmm. want to be able to understand German lyrics. Or they want to work for a German company like BMW or Porsche or Mercedes or Zeiss. They make uh, optics, right? Mm -hmm. Or Siemens, right? They make appliances, right? All of which have major operations here in the United States, right? And you can see American employees assembling cars at the Volkswagen plant in Chattanooga, right? In German, it's not Volkswagen, it's Volkswagen, right? All right, good. And so where is German spoken today? Well, the big three right here, guys, are Germany and Switzerland and Austria, right? Uh, it's also an official language in Luxembourg and Liechtenstein and uh, one province of Italy that goes back to the, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, if it doesn't matter, okay? Uh, so German has about 105 million speakers. So that's, that's a pretty major language. I mean, it's not Mandarin Chinese, but it's not Urdu either. You know, it's, it's up there, okay? Um, so German, as you can see from the map, is mostly spoken in the central, central European countries of Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. However, prior to World War I, German-speaking Europe was much larger because of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. All right? You see the empire right there? Mm -hmm. So they were on the German side in World War I. They lost. <laughs> and all these got broken up into smaller countries like Hungary and the Czech Republic, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, but uh, the history of German just didn't disappear with it, right? So um, there are huge German-speaking minorities uh, there. Um, significant populations of German speakers still live in countries that may, made up the empire and uh, other countries as well. As you, this is a really useful map because the darker the color, the more German speakers there are. So as you can see, again, we have Germany and Austria, right? But the, the, the dark red countries are countries where 20 to 20% 20 to almost 50% of the people can speak German. That's quite a few. Okay, That's a lot. So it is a lot. Because I it would always a... think that Germany, you know, people in, who live in Germany would speak German and then yeah. people who lived in France would speak French and, yeah. you know, so this is but, really interesting that there's multiple countries that speak the same language. Oh yeah. And the, and a lot of the, a lot of it is, is borders changed, you know, due to wars and not just World War II. I mean, there were a lot of wars mm -hmm. <laughs> before that. This region here in, in Northern France, Alsace-Lorraine has changed many times. Mm -hmm. And so there are many, many German speakers there, you know, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, Germany has the largest population in the European Union. It also has the highest gross national product, which means their economy is very strong and productive. Uh, the strong economy allows people in German-speaking countries to enjoy a very high standard of living, right? It's a pretty rich country. So what's, what's fun about learning German? All kinds of things, but if you speak English, it's especially fun because English is a Germanic language. So you see, you see links all of the time. Uh, I guess it's time for, for me to give you an example, okay? A dog in German is a Hund. Try it, Hund. Hund. <laughs> right? Hund. Which reminds you of what? Uh, like a hound. Like a hound, that's exactly right. Okay, so we, a lot of these words, you look at it and you're like, okay, we don't use that word anymore, but yeah. I know what that is, right? It's a hound, right? Hund, right? Um, it, or here's another one. Schwein. Schwein. Good. That's <laughs> excellent. That's, it's, it's also fun to say, right? Yeah, it is. It's a we lot of fun. We don't have any, any words in English that go from sh to v, right? Yeah. But yeah. in German, it happens a lot. Schwein. You know, Schwein. Schwein. Yeah, Which exactly. sounds like swine. <laughs> That's exactly right. Okay. It goes back to English, old English swine, right? Um, and we did, they didn't get the word from us. We got the word from them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Temporarily. All right. And then here's another one. Okay. The word for bottle is flasche. Flasche. Yeah. Flasche, which is like English what? Hmm. Faucet? 
All your clothes. What is a what is a hobo drink out of? A flask. There you go. A <laughs> flask. There you go. Good job. Flasche. Okay. Flasche. And you notice that in German you say everything. So if it ends with an e, you say the e. Mm -hmm. Right. So I know your grade school teachers have told you for years that e on the end is silent. And then you get to college and you start learning German and your professor tells you say the e. Okay. Right. But exactly. So flasche. Flasche. Uh, yeah. And so on. Um, compound nouns. German is famous for long words, right? And we're not going to do any long ones today, but it's famous for long words because German snaps words together and makes bigger ones, which makes it perfect for philosophy. Because if you're trying to express something immaterial and there's no word for it, you just make a word. Mm -hmm. You just snap words together, right? So if you liked playing with Legos as a kid, uh, then German is probably the right language for you. <laughs> German is famous for snapping words together to form what are called compound nouns. Here are a few examples, and feel free to repeat after me, by the way. Okay? That's what I call trying a language on for size. Right. Okay? All right, so let's jump into it. All right. Okay. So in German, that is ze. Try ze, right? Which is like the English word what? C. The C, right? But in English, it's an S-E-A, right? In German, it's S-E-E, -E, right? So in German, are all S's pronounced like a Z sound? Very good, very good ears. If As long as they're next to a vowel, yes. Oh, okay. So if they come in front of a vowel, then you have to say it like a Z. Okay. Yeah. And the German letter E is pronounced A. A. Right? Okay. So Z. 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 So that's a Z. What's that? Hund. Hund, very good. Okay. <laughs> and then, but what is Zehund? Zehund. What does it mean? Water dog? You're close. Or seal. <laughs> the seal. seal. Okay. Right? It barks, you know. Yeah. It's a <laughs> water it, right? dog. So in German, that's a Zehund. Zehund. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That's super neat. So that's All your right. compound word. That's a compound noun. Exactly. Yeah. That's a compound noun. Okay. All right, let's do another one. Okay. All right, ready? It's the same word in, in English, but different pronunciation. Hunt. Hunt. There you go. Hunt, right? Because the German A is ah. Okay. So hunt. hunt. Mm -hmm. Shoe. Shoe. <laughs> right, okay. That sounds so, pretty much like it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what's a hunt shoe? A hunt shoe. Let's say a hand and a shoe. Mm, a foot? Or a glove. That makes sense. <laughs> makes sense, right? Makes sense. Yeah. Hunt you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. My students love this stuff. All right. Yes, I do too. This is all so right. fun. We're going to do one more animal. Okay, okay, ready? All right. I know that doesn't look like an animal, but wait. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, that was confusing all right. for a second. Uh, uh, all right, That's ready? Not an Panza. Panza. Panza, which means what? Knight. Almost armor. Armor? Yeah, I had to find a picture of armor. Right. <laughs> so there's armor. What's that? Schwein. Schwein, good. Schwein. Schwein. V, a, the v. The W is a V, exactly. Schwein. Okay. Schwein. And then you get Panzer Schwein. Oh, no. The heck is that? Uh, okay, so armor pig. Yeah, armor pig. Ready? Okay. An armadillo. An armadillo. Panzerschwein. Right? Panzerschwein, yeah, exactly. An armored pig. Okay. <laughs> so, wow. and it goes, <laughs> that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's really neat. Yeah, so we have a lot of fun with that. Yeah. All right, so we're down to here. Okay, so if you would have, if now I wouldn't have been able to guess that. And if, if you had been able to guess that, that would have told me you think like a German already. Okay, mm -hmm. so don't feel bad. <laughs> All right, so those are German nouns, but how does German sound in complete sentences? We're going to look at some typical questions people ask when they're getting to know you. They're the same questions we ask when we're getting to know people. And I'll bet you can correctly guess the meaning of lots of these questions since you already speak a Germanic language fluently, namely English. So again, feel free to repeat because that's the best way to learn. Okay, ready? All right, repeat after me. Ready? Wie ist dein Name? Wie ist dein Name? Perfect. 
Very good. Okay. V is dynamic. V Which means what? Dynamic. Oh, go ahead. Oh, V is dynamic. Uh, good. <laughs> what do you think it means? What is your name? What is your name, right? Do you see the dine? Mm -hmm. That's just like Old English thine. Old English what? Thine. Thine? Like, oh, what is thy name? Exactly, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thine name. Yeah. Thine. So, so it's, it's kind of like embryonic English sometimes, you know. Okay. So, V is dynama. Okay, ready? My nama. Try it. Mine. Mine. Nama. nama. Ist. Ist. Daniel. Katie. Or Katie. Exactly. <laughs> Mine's not Daniel. Yours isn't Daniel. Right. So, you'd say my say, nama. Dr. Charles Hammond. That, you're not that's Daniel. right. <laughs> so, you'd say my nama is Katie. Yeah. My nama is Katie. Uh-huh. Sehr gut. Yeah. Okay. And then the person might hear your accent and say, Kommst du aus den USA? Try it. Kommst du? Kommst du? Aus den? Aus den? USA? USA? Right. So what does that mean? Are you from the USA? Good, right? Do you come from the United States, right? Okay. And then you'd say, for example, Ja. Ja. Ich komme. Ich komme aus Kentucky. Aus Tennessee. Aus Tennessee. <laughs> exactly. Very good. Yeah, I come aus Tennessee. So, so the ja, it's not ja, it's ya. Yeah. So exactly. no hard J's. All J's are pronounced. All J's are Y, Y sound, okay. right? That's correct. Good. And notice again, you know, there's that E at the end. We said it, didn't we? Right. Come. We didn't say ich komme. We say ich komme. Yeah. Ich komme. Aus, aus Kentucky. Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I come from Kentucky, right? And then this question people always ask, at least when they're young, right? What do you think the word alt means? Uh, I was going to think about, because I thought mm -hmm. it might be. Oh, good, good, good thing. What about How you? old are you, right? Oh, okay. Ready? Ready? Wie alt? Wie alt? Bist du? Bist du? Mm -hmm. Wie alt bist du? How Wie old are you? Wie alt bist du? Very good. Wie alt bist du? Yeah. Okay. Ich bin. Ich bin. 18. 18. Uh -huh, a little softer. 18. 18. Jahre alt. Jahre alt. Uh huh. Meaning? I am 18 years old. That's right. I'm 18 years old. Ich bin 18 Jahre alt. Yeah. Good. Okay. Great. Good job. Okay. Thank you. This is my uh, first German lesson. So. No, you're doing really. I'm not <laughs> kidding. Your pronunciation is is excellent. Thank you. I think your training in communications likely, you know, cultivated that that hearing, right? That listening skill. Okay. Not the partying, but the, No, no. You know, <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. Ready? Bist du student? Bist du student? Uh-huh. Bist du student? Yeah. Okay. And notice the German ST at the beginning of a word or the beginning of a syllable is st. St. Like a Right. Sh so student. Student. Yeah, good, good, good. Very good. Student. student. Uh -huh. And then, and when you ask questions in German, do you kind of, you know, add of course, that that's high, right. Like, are mm -hmm. you a student? Exactly. Bist du student? Right. Okay. Well, you don't want to come off sounding like the Terminator, right? Right. <laughs> Bist du student? Right. <laughs> so, all right, a long one. Ready? Okay. Let me move you here. Do, 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 do. There you go. Okay. Ready? Ja. Ja. Ich bin. Ich bin. Student. Student. Uh huh. Now, since you're female, you would have to say, Ja, ich bin. Ready? Studentin. Studentin. Right. So that it, there would be an I N at the end of student because you're female. Okay. So you'd say, Ja, ich bin Studentin. I would say, Ja, ich bin Student. Okay. Yeah. Ja, ich bin Studente. Studentin. Studentin. There you go. That's okay. it. Studentin, right? And then we're, we're going to say ich. Ich. Perfect. Studiere. Studiere. Good. Okay. Good. Biologie. Biologie. Uh -huh. Biologie. Biologie. Perfect. Yeah. Und? Und? Musik. Musik. Yeah. So ich studiere. 
Biologie und Musik. Ja. Ich studiere Biologie und, und? Musik. Musik. Und? Good, Katie, awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's really, Thank really you. Good. Okay. All right. Here comes the most important question. Ready? Lernst du? Lernst du? Deutsch? Deutsch? What does that mean? Do you know Dutch? Do you Close. Know Do you, are, you, are you learning German? Do you are learn you German? Learning? Are you learning German? Are you learning German, right? Ja. Ja. <laughs> ja. <laughs> ja. 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 Ich lerne. Ja, ich lerne. Seit. Seit. Zwei. Zwei. Semestern. Semestern. Deutsch. Deutsch. What does it mean? Yes. Uh huh. I am learning in the I've second. I've been learning. I've been learning for two semesters. Or Good. Two, okay. Good. And what does Deutsch mean? German. Right. So I've, I've been learning German, German for two for semesters. Two semesters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ich lerne seit zwei in the semester in Deutsch. Okay. I and then. I noticed the S-E's, that's when we sound the Z's, right? That's, that's right, together. right? Good, okay. And E-I is the I sound and I-E is the E sound. So what you basically do when you have an E-I, you look at that second letter mm -hmm. and you say it in English, right? That's the letter I, right? Mm -hmm. In English. So Zeit. So, Zeit, right. If you have I-E, like studiere, e. you look at that second letter in English is E, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Studiere. Yeah. So, studiere. Uh -huh, studiere. So that German R, as you can tell, is back here, right? American R's are way up front. Uh -huh. And if you really want to give yourself away as an American anywhere in the world, you put the, that R way up in front, uh -huh. right? Even in other English-speaking countries. Right. Okay? Americans really stand out because we like to say roar, 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 uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And so if you have really bad pronunciation, you might look at this and say, ich studiere. <laughs> he's still there. Studera, yeah, and then everybody goes, okay, he's American. Okay, right. they're not okay. really German. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's just practicing. But, yeah, but with time, when you're learning German, you want to start pushing that back and being conscious of that R and then ich studiere, you know. Oh, I hear it now. Closer. Mm -hmm. Ich studiere. Uh huh, studiere, right? And then last question. Findest du? Findest du? Deutsch. Deutsch. Interessant. In, interessant. Good. Interessant. Good. Interessant. So what does that mean? Do you find German interesting? Right. And that's the main way in German they ask your opinion. I mean, in English, it might sound kind of, you know, conceited or something to say, do you find German interesting? It sounds like you're putting on airs, right? Do you mm -hmm. find German interesting, right? Mm -hmm. But in German, that's the way they usually ask for your opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, findest du Deutsch interessant? And of course, if you had Professor Hammond, you're going to say, ja. ja. <laughs> <laughs> right? Ich finde. Ich finde. Deutsch. Deutsch. Sehr interessant. Sehr interessant. Good. What do you think sehr interessant means? Very. Yes. Very, very good. So, interesting. Yeah. So sometimes you hear me say sehr gut, and sehr gut means very good, right? Good job. Oh, okay. awesome. Excellent. You did a great job. So Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So as you can see, German is written very much like it sounds. So the spelling isn't difficult once you know the sound that each letter makes. For example, you noticed, as you did, that the J makes a Y sound or that the W makes a V sound, right? Okay. And so, that's not Disneyland. That's a real castle. That's in beautiful. That is on my place that when we can travel, <laughs> I want to see that castle. That's one of the most famous tourist attractions. Oh. It's called, ready? Neu. Neu. Schwan. Schwan. Stein. 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 Neu Schwanstein, right. Neu so, Schwanstein. Uh-huh. New Swanstone, right. Castle. Neu Schwanstein Castle in Germany. And um, I'm running out of time. We are running out of time, but I just wanted to take the opportunity to give you a little taste of German. And I hope it was fun for you and that you give some thought to taking this exciting language when you get the chance. In the meantime, you can begin your German adventure by logging on to duolingo.com. 
uh, where German is the third most popular language. They offer, I think, 24 languages and German is number, number three. Uh, so it's pretty popular. Uh, you'll be in good company because there are millions of other people learning along with you. Uh, also on YouTube, um, there are any number of Germans who really get a kick out of teaching English speakers German. Uh, <laughs> and so, um, you know, I, I would recommend almost uh, any of them, you know, uh, they have different personalities and whichever personality fits, you know, and different teaching styles, of course. And so um, whichever one uh, lights your fire, go, go with them. Um, there are some of them who have been doing it for years since so they ha have hundreds of videos that start mm -hmm. you out from, from nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's free, which means even I can afford it. It's, right? it's always great when it's free. <laughs> it's always great when it's free. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. And maybe I'll see you in class one day. And uh, so I just want to tell the students, Auf Wiedersehen. And here's a picture right there. <laughs> they all, don't worry germans don't all walk around with flags in their pockets they're they're at the they're watching the national game and so they're cheering on their team um and so yeah that's my that's my presentation well wonderful you know, so, yeah so i'm gonna hit stop share now okay and so, we'll get okay. back up here and i've got a couple questions for you before sure. we wrap this up so thank you again. I've, that was a wonderful lesson and I'm going to oh, go around saying, it. yeah, yeah. So it'll be a <laughs> lot of fun. It'll be a lot of fun. Good. So, but um, what are two different approaches to visiting a foreign country? And I think you touched on that a little at the beginning. You could go as a tourist yes. or go when, as, you know, immersion. Yeah, I, I was thinking um, you wanted to ask, um, you wanted to ask people who had watched the video these questions. I didn't know that you were putting these to me, uh, but, but to review uh, the two main ways that people, you know, there are other ways to visit foreign countries. I mean, joining the military or, you know, being sent there on business or something. Th those are all possibilities, but the main two ways people study, uh, or excuse me, the main two ways people visit foreign countries is either as a tourist, mm -hmm right, on vacation, or uh, something more serious when, you know, after you've studied the language in high school or college, and you go there, for example, at UTM, you have the opportunity to stay with a host family, mm -hmm. like a German host family, which is really, really cool, mm -hmm. uh, and so different, and so much more beneficial than staying in a hotel. Right. Not only that, but the food's better, but, right. but, uh, but yeah, so those are the those are the two ways, and um, I've I've done both, and I find that the second way is the more gratifying way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, for example, my wife is Japanese, and um, before I visited Japan the first time, I did my best to learn as much as I could, right. Mm -hmm. And um, Americans abroad have a reputation for not speaking any foreign languages at all. And in a funny way, that works to our advantage, because if you go there and you can speak even a little, people, you know, fall all over, all over themselves praising you mm -hmm. because their stereotype of an American is so different. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you can really buck the stereotype. And I like bucking the stereotype, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, yeah. So yeah. I just want to encourage people to do that. And plus you have the opportunity and the time to take a foreign language and not everybody has that privilege. Right. So I highly recommend you use it. Plus it's fun, mm -hmm. right? It's not like learning math. I mean, nothing, not that math can't be fun, but you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a different part of your brain Absolutely. that you're using. And you know, most classes you're supposed to sit down and shut up but in language class, we're always encouraging you to do what? <laughs> to speak. speak. Right? right. And so it's very different. Now, I have a lot of students who, um, who major in the natural sciences, and they, they tell me, I've, I've, I'm told this pretty much every semester, how much they look forward to coming to German, because it's just such a different classroom experience than what they're accustomed to. Right. right? Um, yeah. And so let's see. And there was another question. There was another question. What are some typical reasons students decide to take German? Well, let me ask you that. <laughs> Do you remember? 
Oh man. Was this at the beginning of the lesson? This is at the beginning. Right? Oh no, I remember because I remember the visuals, the hotel. Right. You know, you want to immerse yourself and to really, mm -hmm. you know, but you can make friends with those mm -hmm. people and last. Exactly, that's one one, and then people often learn uh, German because of German heritage. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, also um, if they are studying subjects where German figures very prominently right? Mm -hmm. Like philosophy and psychology mm -hmm. and classical music. That's and, right. I, know, did, I didn't know that Sigmund or uh, Sig, Sigfrid, no, Sigmund, I'm thinking of Sigfrid and Roy. No, That's no. Not it. Those Sigfrid are the lines. Sigfrid and Roy are German. That's oh. the funny thing. Yeah. They oh, are wow. From okay. Yeah. Um, but um, Sigmund Freud was from Austria. Okay. Okay. But of course, Austria, their, their language is German, right? Right. Right. So, um, yeah. So um, there's that. And then, of course, Germany is economically, economically, Germany gets most of its money from exports. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't export, you know, uh, rice and beans. It exports, you know, precision equipment. Mm -hmm. and, and so you can, you can charge a pretty high uh, price for those, those items, right? right? Like cars right. or medical equipment or you know, precision lenses or, you know, all these kinds of things. Um, so you know, if you, mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to say, so if some of our uh, viewers right now, if their parents are driving a Volkswagen, right? Right. So Volkswagen. Mm -hmm. Volkswagen. So uh -huh. the wagon, it's not a wagon. It's Volkswagen. It's a car. Wagon. Wagen. And Wagen. Okay. Right. Because remember the A, the A is an A ah sound like you're at the dentist, right? That's Volkswagen, right. right. That's right. Yeah. Well, perfect. Well, Good. do you have any? Do you have any questions of your own? I just am ready to travel again. Good. Uh, and be because that German. I know we talked before we started recording, but uh, yeah. for all the followers and the listeners, my next trip that's on my list, my to do list, is to go to Germany, Austria, Good. And Switzerland. Good, so, good. Well, if you want to learn any German along the way, uh, I'm always here at your disposal. Well, thank you. And what was that website again? That sure, Duolingo. Duolingo. Okay. So D U O mm -hmm. Lingo, L I N G O, Duolingo. Dot com. Dot com. Okay. And those are free lessons. Okay. And they offer, like I said, twenty four languages or something. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Doctor Heyman, and I'll My close pleasure. this out really quickly. So. Yes. Thank you to all of our viewers today for joining us. We look forward to continuing our mission here at Discovery Park of inspiring children and adults to see beyond by partnering with professors at UT Martin. For more educational resources, visit our website at discoveryparkofamerica.com slash education. We'll see you next time.